short uh, little uh, video in which I explained the poem Filling Station. I suppose I'm looking at this as another um, Bishop poem, but also, um, you know, if you're looking at unseen poetry, what are they going to ask you? They're going to ask you about theme and language. So let's have a quick look at this poem. So Bishop, um, American poet. So a filling station is an American term, what we call a petrol station. Excuse me, I'll have a drink of water. And this is um, one of those autobiographical poems where Bishop uh, uses her narrative style to paint a dramatic scenario or a little, you know, a little scene. Um, and uh, then draw um, some conclusions from the scene. Uh, it's a poem about uh, her sense of dislocation, that sense of not belonging anywhere. Um, it's a poem in which the poet's, you know, determined honesty is clear, and it's a poem in which her her emotional state is um, is um, well conveyed with some humor. Okay, so she's a snob essentially, uh, and this is one of those poems in which you know I suppose what 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 are the appealing qualities in other human beings? Well, that's you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Excuse the cliche, but one of one of the uh, most appealing qualities in other human beings, as far as I'm concerned, is their ability to realise when they're being stupid, and to recognise that and to be humble. And this is a poem which the poet recognises that she's wrong, and um, she's quite humble, and it's a lovely poem. So it opens up with this kind of you know very dramatic, <laughs> deliberately um, uh, melodramatic, I suppose, over the top. Um, line oh but it is dirty you know that word dirty if you talk about persuasive language it's kind of very negative buzzword you know suggestive of something which is unappealing unattractive um, and she's describing this place and it's just, just it's appalling to her the exclamation mark uh, indicates the extent of her uh, dislike or disgust at this place and she goes on to describe it this little filling station oil soaked oil permeated to a disturbing overall black translucency be careful with that match and again you have that exclamation mark it's a bit of humor so she's she's arrived at this place and it's covered in oil so you definitely would learn you know that that's a great little reference her use of the word disturbing again is interesting because it captures the sense of her being you know appalled by this place Permeated means the oil has soaked through into the very fabric of the place. The repetition of oil, you know, those compound words, oil soaked, oil permeated, you know, going a long way to allowing us in a tactile sense to nearly feel the greasy essence of the setting. So it's very, very, very clever. Everything is almost shiny. With the tr black translucency is a reference to, you know, that, that kind of um, shiny... Uh, um, texture of, of of oil and things that are covered with oil so there's your setting she goes on in the second stanza then to describe character it's very very good um, and the, it's, it's, it's a family filling station she says it down here and she describes the father and again the repetition of dirty you know is there so it's emphasizing the filth of the place so father was a dirty oil soaked monkey suit now a monkey suit again it's an americanism it's a term that we would use to describe overalls, okay? Uh, that cuts him under the arm. So she's she's kind of making a, a you know a, a snide remark about the fact that the father's slightly overweight, and that the um, overalls he's wearing, the working clothes he's wearing, don't quite fit him. And then she describes the children that surround him, and she says, and I love this. I if I was doing this poem, I'd definitely learn it. And several quick and saucy and greasy sons assist him. Beautiful use of sibilance. Really clever, you know, capturing, I suppose, the um, the uh, the nature of the children and the slippery nature of the place. That repetition of the SM just sharpens the image. The image of the uh, you know, the sons, that's a noun, okay? So sons is a noun. And what does she do? She describes them as quick and saucy and greasy. You know, very, very, very clever. You know, saucy, by the way, is a... Again, another Americanism, it means cheeky or disrespectful. So she feels that these children are kind of feral or running wild. And again, it just goes to emphasize how um, uncomfortable she feels in this place, and she, which she describes as being all quite thoroughly dirty. So her contempt for the place, her, her dislike of the place, her sense that this, these people are somehow beneath her 
or that she is somehow superior to them. That's very uh, uh, clearly uh, delineated in the poem in the opening two stanzas. But of course, Bishop was not an ignorant, you know, um, elitist human being. She was a wonderfully thoughtful human person, you know. And um, what she does in this poem, just like with the poem The Fish, particularly th- those two poems go together. She, she takes this, this scene and then she starts thinking about what, she see, what she's looking at. And the more she thinks, the more she sees, you know. And the more she sees, the more the tone of the poem changes. So the next line is very important. Do they live in the station? And what's important is the fact that she's starting to ask questions. She describes the place again in, in great detail. It's wonderfully um, witty, you know, um, description of, of this place. It's very vivid. It has a cement port, so again, adjective noun combination behind the pumps, and on it a set of crushed and grease impregnated wickerwork. I mean, look at the compound words in the event, the event of language there. So wickerwork is like, you know, wicker, to, you know, outdoor furniture, but the furniture is all worn down. And because the people who live and work there are covered in oil and grease, that the furniture has become like impregnated with the grease. Very, very clever use of language and she's appalled she looks up what she see up on the sofa there's a dog and, and again the use of the word dirty the repetition very notable feature in the poem of the dog and it's sitting up there and it's quite comfy and that's not that's that's the first that use of that word comfy is striking because they, you know everything else has been kind of unpleasant and horrible and you know uh, uh, oil soaked oil permeated grease impregnated you know quick and saucy and greasy suns the dirty dog but then you have this word comfy you know, and, and even using that term instead of the word comfortable, you know, suggests that the dog is where? Well, where, where, where are we comfy? Well, we're comfy when we're at home. And of course, this brings we suddenly, to, or not suddenly, but, you know, the, the, the meaning of the poem, the inspiration, the reason she writes the poem becomes, you know, clear as, as the poem goes on. She looks further, again, detail, 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 I open the porch and there's some comic books there, so they belong to the children, obviously, um, provide the only note of colour, again, that's the American spelling of the word colour, of certain colour, again, she, you know, she, she pays attention to detail because the comics have been obviously touched by these people with their filthy, dirty hands, so the colour is faded, and then she notices that on the table, there's a a piece of um, embroidery so a doily see that word doily and that's a very important symbol in the poem the doily the, a doily is like a piece of um, of um, embroidery it's like a tablecloth a uh, tabaret is a small table um, you know like those the kind of Russian tables where just there's a small one and a bigger one and a bigger one they all slide in underneath each other and there's a begonia and a begonia is a house plant so what she's noticing here are signs of domesticity so the comfy dog the doily that someone had to you know create because it's a piece of embroidery the begonia which somebody puts there to make the place look prettier which she thinks is hilarious because how could this place look pretty and it's these little indicators of domesticity that that kind of really draw her in and she starts thinking about something she starts thinking about this place that is so appalling to her but actually this is home to these people and that's you know, when she starts really thinking and the, 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 that process is emphasized by the repeated use of the question mark. And, you know, those question marks show what an inquisitive mind she has. Why the extraneous plant? So extraneous means it doesn't fit in there. Why the tablet? Why? And then the repetition, oh, why? Showing, again, her, you know, sense of, you know, a, a contempt almost. The doily. So why would you have this these these things in this horrible place? She goes on and describes typically for um, this poet, you know, the, the, the detail of the doily, the fact that it's been, um, um, this is a daisy stitch, a little flowers, margaritas have been stitched into it and so on. And then we get to her moment of epiphany, E-P-I-P-H-A-N-Y. And it's a wonderful, you know, you, you, you could read this poem and kind of misconstrue it and just think she's a snob and she's, you know, you know, mocking these people. But then you read a bit more closely, just get in a little bit more under the skin of the poem. And, and, and you realise that, like, she's saying, God, I, how wrong can you be? Because she starts realising that somebody embroidered that doily, somebody waters the plant, then her little joke, or oils it maybe. Ha ha, very funny, Elizabeth. 
Somebody arranges the rows of cans so that they softly say so, 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 so. There's the idea that the cans have been you know, stacked one behind the other in a kind of um, decorative fashion. And she realizes that the reason that the person embroidered the doily is because they want to make the place look nicer because it's their home, because they love the place and they belong there. The reason why somebody puts the plant there and waters it is because it's their home and they want to make it feel like home. The reason why somebody arranges the cans in the way they do is because they're proud of this place, because this place is their home. And it's at that moment that Bishop realises that she was wrong to have contempt for this place because the people who live in this dirty place are luckier than she is. She is the high-strung automobile. High-strung means snobby or elitist or, um, um, you know, somebody who is um, judgmental. And she realises that, that these people are so much better off than she is because they have a place that they're proud of. They have a place where they belong. It might not be the type of place where she could ever feel comfortable. It certainly is not the type of place that she could ever call home. But it is a place that they call home. And that gives her hope. And that's why the poem ends with, you know, that amazing final line, which, you know, anybody who's ever read this poem knows. Somebody loves us all. This, this moment of insight, this moment of understanding, this moment of epiphany in which he realizes, you know what, I'm on this journey through life and I haven't yet found somewhere to call home because of what happened when I was a child and my sense of dislocation. But my goodness me, if people can find a home in a place like this and feel that they belong in this place and feel so proud that they will try and make it look pretty, even though it's a, such an unpleasantly industrial scene, well, there must be somewhere that I can call home. And you get a sense of her getting into her car with a renewed sense of optimism, a renewed sense of a renewed sense of determination, and a, and a renewed ability to to face the journey um, uh, ahead of her in her life that search for home. It's a lovely, lovely poem, full of symbolism, introspective, uh, it's, it's, it's narrative, it's uh, beautifully detailed, has that typical moment of epiphany, has a sense of humour, you get a real sense of the person uh, that Elizabeth Bishop was from reading that poem. And she certainly was somebody who uh, didn't waste her life.